that splash. Where's your rubber ducky? Splash, splash. For generations, parents have looked in wonder at the perfection of those ten little fingers and ten little toes. They're clean. They're clean, No scrutiny was closer than for the birth of Louise Brown in 1978. The Globe watched as the world's first test tube baby, the first child born of IVF, came into the world in this delivery room. Ottawa fertility specialist Dr. Art Leader remembers those times. Back in the 70s when the first IVF children were born, is uh, the concerns were these children would be monsters, that the children uh, would be uh, outcasts in society because they were conceived in a dish. That didn't happen. 36 years later, Dr. Robert Edwards won a Nobel Prize for developing in vitro fertilization. That's Louise Brown, cutting a cake on her 25th birthday. She has since gone on to have a child of her own, conceived naturally. Breathe. You're halfway there. Breathe. And lower. Inhale. It's the outcome we all hope for, healthy children who can have healthy children of their own. Most would-be parents assume babies born using this technology, like Louise Brown, would be just as healthy as those conceived naturally. But that appears to be far too rosy a picture. Normal fertile couple have this level of, of birth defects. Infertile people who don't have fertility treatment have this level of birth defects. And infertile people who have need fertility treatment have this level of birth defects. What do the actual numbers tell us? Well, that depends on the study. Some show there is no higher risk of anomalies in children born of reproductive technologies. Others say the risks are undeniable. A famous Australian study showed babies born using IVF or ICSI had a 2.5% higher risk of anomalies than babies made the old-fashioned way. And another study looking at thousands of California women who visited fertility clinics seems even more dire. I think there was more severity than we expected to find. Mary Krogan began tracking the health of the babies, looking for things like ADHD, behavior disorders, vision and hearing problems. Those were the mild outcomes. She also measured for severe issues, including cerebral palsy, mental retardation, autism and seizure disorders. What she found was disturbing. The, the mild outcomes was about a 60% increased risk. And the kids whose either mother, father or both had been infertile at the time they were conceived and in the severe outcomes, a fourfold increased risk. A fourfold increased risk of birth anomalies, but doctors don't really know why. Researchers are seeing a pattern, and not just in multiple birth cases, which are always riskier pregnancies. They're seeing a pattern in singleton babies too. So even there in the singletons, we found an increased risk of low birth weight and preterm deliveries. Is it whatever caused the infertility in the first place? Or the fertility technologies? Krogan's research suggests it's both. Even a natural conception in the infertile group was still associated with about a threefold increased risk of the severe outcomes and about a 50% increase in risk of the mild outcomes. And in addition, the higher the technology that's needed to actually conceive the pregnancy, the more likely that you are to have some of the adverse neurologic uh, problems afterwards. And there may be problems which are far more subtle. Other changes that affect IQ, that affect behavior, that affect immune response, that affect kidney function, that affect fertility. We don't know any of that yet. It's an experiment. Are we in the midst of a human experiment? Sure. A human experiment so new that it's possible the full effects of making human life in a lab won't be measured for decades. Though the numbers sound scary, the chances of anomalies among children born of assisted reproductive technologies are still quite small. A doubling or even tripling of the risk could mean the difference between a 1% chance and a 3% chance. The biggest danger? Sharing the womb. You're automatically pretty much destined to be low birth weight and preterm. So you start off with two strikes against you already. Preterm predisposes babies to breathing, heart and vision problems, as well as a higher chance of lifelong disabilities. 
Which is why some say the most important thing to regulate is embryo transfer when it comes to the health of babies born of IVF. One embryo transfer unless there is an exceptional situation. Whatever the dangers, whatever the statistics and the bigger ethical questions, many couples will go to any length, undergo any procedure and empty their bank accounts to have a child. We basically will do whatever it takes. We want a family, and that is our dream. Ultimately, everything comes down to a number of a different kind, money. Oh, 7,100, there we go, another one. There's no question that infertility is a huge business in North America, there's no question about it. Next on 16 by 9, medical tourism in Canada. A 20-minute drive, 15-minute drive, that prevented us from having a family. Why aren't all couples treated equally? 